everybody. Welcome, welcome. I'm so excited to have you here today. We have a very special lady with us. Her name is Ashley, and we're going to be talking a little bit about her story. Her, she is an official graduate of the Fully Functional Program. And I like to also say that there are different types of graduates of the program. Of course, you know, the end all be all for I think anyone coming into a fully functional program is to of course leave with a baby and be pregnant. However, there are many different ways to end the program. And I say that all women end um, successfully because really the end goal of functional fertility and fully functional is to make you feel in charge of your fertility and really empowered of your own journey and really understanding no matter where that leads you, that you are in control and that you know how to take charge of your fertility. So it just happens to be that Ashley is one of those graduates that is pregnant and we are going to be talking about her journey <laughs> on how to get there. And uh, so I just want to welcome you, Ashley. How are you doing today? How are you feeling? You. Doing good, feeling good, um, you know, excited. I think when you're in the middle of the program, you're like pumped and excited and then you're like getting to the end and you're like, but I'm not pregnant. And then, so to be here is awesome. Um, but to have the tools that, you know, you gave me um, even before I got pregnant was just like, felt very empowering and awesome to like move forward with those. Amazing. I love that. And we'll talk a little bit more about that. And just, it is a journey, right? And like, like you said, yeah, it totally. is tough. And you, you take steps to, to do this and you commit both your time, your finances, your energy. And it's like, you know, we, I just wish I had a, you know, snap of the fingers. I could say, yes, yeah. it's your time now. Totally. <laughs> yes. um, but it, we'll, we'll talk about what that is for like for someone going through the program. But first yeah. I want to hear about a little bit just uh, in regards to your trying to conceive journey. Tell us kind yeah. of, you know, where you were at before reaching out to functional fertility and kind of a little bit about your background. Yeah. Um, so we started trying to conceive, um, like right on our honeymoon. Um, and you know, my husband had no doubts. He was like, it's going to happen right away. I'm like, cool. I'm glad you're so confident. I'm not, um, <laughs> I don't know. I just always kind of had this, whatever gut feeling intuition that like, it was just going to be a bit of a struggle. Mm -hmm. Um, and then on the other end, you know, I'm like, well, you need to be positive and like, cause your mind is powerful. So, you know, it was a bit of a, a mental battle there, I think to like mind over matter. Um, but in my head, I knew that at like six months that like, I wanted to go get us like tested from a, you know, reproductive endocrinologist. Cause I'm like, why, what is this? Like, let's wait a year. Like, Love that. and then we're gonna like, because if that was the case, then we would have just started all of this, um, you know, a couple months ago. Um, so I think waiting a year is just like the worst advice anybody could ever get. Um, so at six months, we went in, um, everything was fine, apparently. And backstory, I had had an HSG four years prior to going back into testing with an ex and my tubes were open, everything was fine. And, you know, I had asked about like, well, could they be blocked now type of thing? And they were like, absolutely not. Like if they were open then they're open now. So that, um, you know, I was kind of like, okay. Um, so after that, I reached out to um, a functional medicine doctor um, and started some blood work with her and went through that, got those results back. And we went through, you know, supplements to add in and not, and kind of she gave me some like diet, like a printout type thing. Um, but I just felt so overwhelmed by that. Like, I was like, Oh my gosh, like this just feels like eat this, but don't eat this. And like, so I was just really overwhelmed by it. So then I found you, um, which was just like amazing. Um, and your program was amazing. Like it gave me what was missing in like the journey of like trying to it took out like the guesswork for me of like, you can eat this, but not eat this. And it was less of like, you know, don't eat this, but incorporate this. And like, so that was really nice that, you know, you're not cutting out foods that aren't unnecessary. Like, you know, I don't have any dietary needs to cut anything out. Um, so that was awesome. Um, 
and then let's see and then I think at like the year mark we were kind of like told by um the functional medicine doctor she's like well I don't know if there's anything else I can do um and I was obviously still working with you um I was like well before we go anywhere I was like I want to have another HSG um and so they repeated that um and sure enough, you know, they were like, oh, your right tube is actually blocked now. <laughs> mm, so, so you know, if you feel like something is off in your body, just trust your instinct and push for it. Because you really, I think, especially in this process, have to advocate for yourself and like what you want, which is so frustrating, but necessary. Mm. Um, so, yeah. And then um shortly after the HSG, I think it was the same month, same cycle. Um, I ended up pregnant. So (laughs) yes, yes. Which was so incredible. And I think even our last visit before that, like it was after your second HSG, we had a visit in between there Yeah, we were both kind of, you know, just like, okay, let's not make any drastic changes, but like, let's, let's just sit with this, like feel how we feel. It's emotional. There's a lot of things happening. Uh, but let's still, kind of just send good energy we're kind of just like yeah let's just try to keep our heads above water totally. and be positive in any sp- little spectrum that we can but also like yes. be okay with not being okay too yeah right? definitely yeah yeah and so I think that you know that was a really really I think just uh, it was an emotional visit I was emotional visit yeah. for me I can yeah. imagine for you and yeah, then totally. to hear the news like I think a couple weeks later I was just so yeah thrilled. <laughs> It yeah, it was just amazing. Yeah. Wonderful. Well, thank you for sharing your background. And so many parts of that story are just really incredible. And I, I really want to emphasize how uh, the reason why I like to talk with women who are in fully functional is to get their story to really not show just like, oh, well, this can be done or this is a way to be successful, Mm -hmm. but also to highlight how different everyone's stories can be too. Totally. Yeah. Right. And so I love a lot of things. I wrote down a couple of things I want to go back to. Um, One of them is the wait a year thing, right? Yeah. We just like, okay, at six months, you're pretty much just like emotionally ready to do something different, right? Yeah. It's such an exhausting journey. And it's like, so why would you like let's wait a year. Let's give you some more anxiety about everything and then see how it goes. Yes. Yes. Seriously. Let's just like completely exhaust ourselves emotionally. And then when you go to a year, we'll just say do IVF and you know, that'll be a good solution. Yeah, no, that's what they do. And it's just like, well, there's so much. And I think people don't always realize too, there's so much you can do um, through nutrition and like functional medicine that reproductive endocrinologists won't even touch so they won't even mention and it's like no there there's actually a lot you can fix through like yep. just working on things yeah you got it and and that's what I think it's an educational piece of that and just a knowledge piece of that that people need to know there yeah. are different options and totally. you did such a good job of bringing in that team approach right like you have yeah. the RE which definitely you know every single one of these people are important but mm-hmm. like they have their limits I have my limits. Functional medicine doctors have their yeah, limits. Totally. But you did an amazing job of like building your team around you and, and also for advocating mm-hmm. for yourself, which was incredible. Yeah. Do you have any advice on that for women who like may just feel a little bit of fear surrounding the medical community or like maybe they don't have the place to stand up and ask for something that they want or feel is right for them? What would you tell women who feel like that? Yeah. Um, just, I mean, always at the end of the day, listen to your gut. Um, you know, I think women in particular are gifted with a sense of, you know, what's going on in their bodies. And especially after learning, like what I did through like your course and like, you know, we can so much more in tune with the body when we stop and slow down and listen and like do those things. Um, yeah. Start there and then, um, you know, if somebody is not listening, go to somebody else. Like, and I know some people live in a small town, but, you know, it's worth it to find somebody who's going to listen to you and advocate with you. Um, Even if that's not like, you know, I don't feel like the RE we were seeing was very (laughs) on board with really anything other than like, well, let's do some IVF type thing. 
Um, but we were there, we knew for testing only. Um, Mm -hmm. and we had another, you know, group of people around us that were, um, the other blocks to like, you know, help us advocate or give us the, yeah, you can do this. Um, you know, try this instead of this, like, so I think having a team is definitely helpful in finding people who are supportive of like, you know, finding other ways to try and get through it other than like, well, take some hormones and like, it's like, yeah. why? Yeah. Or if it's not necessary, it's so much stuff in your body, you know? Yeah, I love that. And it's very important to know that you have the say, you have the ability to say, all right, this yeah. feels good to me. Let's continue. Or, you know what? This just doesn't feel good to me. I'm going to ask around. I'm going to ask questions. Yeah. And I encourage totally. people to do that with starting a program with me too. Like I say, I'm not a good fit yeah. for everybody. Like, I don't think I yeah. can help every single person. It may not be a fit emotionally. It may not be uh, the changes that you believe in or that you want to pursue yeah. and that's okay. You need to do what totally. is best for you. So yeah, I love definitely. that. And tell me, you mentioned a little part about kind of just the overwhelm piece. Um, you yeah. know, yeah. So I want to talk a little bit about that, right? Because this is a, a line that I try to walk finally as well with providing information and education, but not overwhelming because it is such an overwhelming topic, right? You start on your yeah, own, totally. you're Googling, you're reading books. Yeah. You start working with practitioners, yeah. but even like then it can still just be so much. How yeah. do you, how did you, I mean, you kind of kept, it seemed like you just kind of kept searching for people to help you along the journey and build that cohesive team. Is yeah. that kind of how you would say you dealt with that and then kind of were able to bring it all together? Yeah. You know, like, and I like felt like there was still, you know, more that could be done or, you know, like the functional medicine doctor, like I was like, she's helpful, but like, I need more. Mm-hmm. Um, so I knew I needed more. Um, and so I think, you know, listen, you know, and she was more than willing to like, she's so great too. She's always available. And, um, but for me personally, I just needed more like one-on-one and that's what you provided. And I found that and that was great. Um, you know, like mentally, like exhausting and things like that. I started therapy. Um, and I think like your program really helped like encourage just like feeling the feels and like, Mm -hmm. I'm such an internalizer. Um, so for me, that's difficult sometimes, but I just like, um, through like the stress mapping and things like that, you know, taking more time to do things that I enjoy and saying no to things that like, maybe I don't actually want to do for other people, um, is beneficial. It's not selfish. You know, it's like, it's for our health and like our bodies. And, um, I think one of my favorite things was like learning about the seasons throughout our cycle. Um, uh, so yeah, it's super great. Um, but just really being, um, you know, I think intuitive and listening and, um, you know, taking a break if your body is like saying no to something or even mentally, you're like, I can't do it. But I think in this world, we just tend to push through so much and it's not a healthy thing, you know? Um, So I think it's really just helped me to slow down and like look internally and like, oh, okay. Like it feels so much better to like take Mm -hmm. a step back and like be able to like self-care and take care of yourself because you can't really pour from an empty cup. So (laughs) Yep. You got it. You have yeah. really described so much of the lessons in the program so perfectly there. I'm so proud, especially that second pillar, the pillar number two of the three, yeah. three pillar um, process that is depleted to repleted. Right. Yeah. And we talk a lot about this as many, the type of women, woman that I work with is mm-hmm. generally a overachiever in yeah. either like some senses, whether that's um, yeah, emotionally or for herself or for other people, yeah. we give, we give, we give, we do, we do. Mm-hmm. And oftentimes it takes a little bit to like, it takes a lot to actually recognize like, okay, Hey, like I'm given and my cup is getting pretty low. What am I doing? Yeah, to deplete? totally. Yeah. And a lot of time, like nothing. I'm not doing anything to like replenish. So that was like super beneficial to like learn and be like, kind of like hit on the head with like, 
slow down like you know especially when you're like trying to conceive for you know after I think I mean after three months you're kind of like okay and then like six months you're like yeah okay and then you know you're like just done with it you're like you know tired and mentally exhausted and people's when are you gonna have babies and you're like Mm -hmm. could you shut up (laughs) oh yes it's so hard to keep fielding those questions and and handle that emotionally and I love that the fact you mentioned you started therapy that's it and something that I always recommend to accompany a fertility journey for anyone is yeah get on board with a therapist that you trust and, and feel good with again, someone that, yeah. you know, emotionally you, you vibe with. Um, and I love all those things that you decided to change about, you know, how you handle emotions, how you fill up your cup. Yeah. And that not only helps you and helps you on your journey, but that sets you up for success in motherhood. Right. And having a baby, yeah. like, this is what I try to tell people too. It's like, listen, this is just the beginning of your life changing, right? Like, yeah. what do you think totally. happens when we have the baby? You're going to have to really, you know, fill right. your cup up. You can't keep pouring out or you're just going to be completely yeah. depleted. So totally. Yeah. I think this program just like sets you up not only for like trying to conceive, but also like after too. And like, I feel so much more like empowered even going into pregnancy because I have like, that set of like, you know, I can go back to like the macro trio and like yeah. eating like that as soon as, you know, I'm not nauseous. And <laughs> yes, yes, <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Once you can actually stomach to eat anything. Yeah. <laughs> Wonderful. Yeah. The lessons you learned just are valuable for you, not only through the three months, but really for, for many years to come. Yeah, totally. Good. Wonderful. And, and you may have just answered this question, but my next question was, what was the most valuable lesson from the three pillar approach, approach that you learned about fertility? Yeah. yeah, I think for me it was probably the macro trio. Um, and like, I'm somebody who would consider myself like a healthy eater, um, you know, but then I'm like, oh, I was having like coffee for breakfast and I was having, you know, and then I was eating like a, a good dinner or something. It's not really being a healthy eater. Um, so I think learning how to like pair foods, especially for women with all of our hormones and things like pairing, you know, I'm like, Oh, have an apple, but like having an apple with almond butter is so much better, especially with like, um, you know, blood sugar levels, which is something I've struggled with in the past, which has gotten so much better after starting that. Like, I'm not like crashing out like I was. And, um, so I think just learning how to like pair those foods without it being, this overwhelming thing. Like I had, you know, the printout on my fridge. So I could be like, wait, what do I need to, yeah, yeah. what do I need to eat with this? Um, which has been so helpful. It's still actually on my fridge. Um, because cool. yeah. I love it. Um, it's so helpful. Um, and you know, it's something I can pass on to like my kids, which feels so cool because I think women, there's so much about our bodies and periods and sex and hormones that we don't get told, Um, and so to have this knowledge to like pass on is super cool because I think girls growing up and women, we need to know more about what our bodies are doing and that it's normal that it does this and, but this isn't normal. So we can actually work on this with food and supplements. And so I just love having that knowledge and it feels so empowering. Incredible. I love that. I love everything about it. And the one thing, you know, I, I do, this is something that I try to really, uh, I think lay out the difference of with people. It's like, yes, healthy. I get a lot of people. Most of my clients are pretty healthy eaters, right? Yeah. Like, like, yeah, but I eat healthy. So there's nothing for me to change in my diet. Right. Diet, totally. Right. And it's like, yep. okay, I get it. I, I do not, I'm not saying you're not eating healthy, but healthy is a very subjective term. Yeah. What, what is healthy to you is healthy yeah. green juice in the morning and right. a little stinky salad at lunch. And then like yeah. a good dinner. That's not really healthy, maybe for your fertility. Right. Right. Exactly. It may yeah. have been healthy to keep you, you know, a, a weight that you feel good with, yes. or like, you know, whatever you want to look like for mm-hmm. your younger years. And that's great, but it yeah. may not be supporting your fertility. And that's where yeah. things like you mentioned, even like your blood sugar, like monitoring your blood sugar and how you feel with that and how your yeah. hormones are actually reacting. And that those are markers that I like to teach everyone to tune into, to listen to yeah. 
and really to learn to decode because that's how we can tell that our bodies are changing and our hormones are changing. Totally. And our, and our fertility is being optimized, really. Yeah, definitely. So that's incredible. And yeah, like you said, I mean, you're going to be using that for so many years now yeah. in the future and teaching your kids that, which is pretty great. Which is yeah, really I incredible. love it. It just makes me so happy. Yay. <laughs> and I mean, oh, we've unpacked so much there that I, that I'm so thankful for. And, and I guess we'll end with just asking, you know, and this is kind of a loaded question because I mean, there's so many things to be excited about, but what are yeah. you most excited about in your oh. pregnancy? Yeah. Um, well, you know, that it's here, of course. <laughs> um, and I think when you, I mean, I'm sure even if you try for like a month and you get pregnant, you're like, oh my gosh. But like when you, you know, month after month, you're trying and you're not, you're like, mm, okay. And then it finally happens. And it's kind of like, wait, really? <laughs> um, yeah. So it just kind of feels surreal. Um, but I think to just like be here and enjoy it and then feel like I have the tools to like, nourish myself and baby like it just you know again feels really good to even like go into that like even if you're not struggling trying to conceive I think this is just such a great program because it gives you such great tools for life um and so yeah I just like you know and then obviously to to hold baby once baby's here and you know just like so lots of lots of exciting things yes. to think about. And yeah, we're just super excited to be here. And yeah. yeah. Fantastic. I wonderful. I, I so appreciate you sharing your journey, Ashley, all the way from the very beginning and how you felt throughout it and how you took control of your fertility and really brought in that team effort to uh, give yourself what you felt like you needed and advocated for yourself the whole way through really yeah. super empowering. And that is just going to be a skill that will serve you from here on out for your children's health, for your maternal health as you go through your pregnancy. Um, and then all the things you learned about your body as well are yeah. just going to continue to serve you. And I just want to say too, about working with you, you know, one thing that I kind of lay out in the beginning of the program are some mm -hmm. client expectations. Yeah. And one of the expectations is, Hey, like you're, I'm not coming in with a magic solution and yeah. a wand and being like, poof, you know, <laughs> Totally. Baby, baby fairy. Yeah. You, here you go. <laughs> right. As much as I wish I could. Yeah. But you know, you're doing the work you had mm -hmm. to put in the energy, the, the time and, and the uh, changing habits that may yeah. not be um, serving us as, as well as we need them to for, for totally. And you just kind of like, were a sponge. I feel like you just took everything in and you were just so open to applying change and implementing things that we saw in the in the data in the test mm -hmm. in the lab in the lab results yeah that we needed to work on and we needed to improve and or change and I just I mean to me that is the the number one quality for um, yeah. many things in life right but especially totally. when we're working on a, a fertility program it's so important yeah. to be open to change to mm -hmm. not be stuck in our ways and think like you know I'm already doing this right or I'm already right. healthy yeah or you know, I, I don't have to change that. That doesn't really mean much mm -hmm. in the overall picture. That's exactly how the fully functional program is laid yeah. out is that things build upon each other. Right. Totally. Yeah. And we so see that it all works together. Yeah. And I think even, even like in the program, you can get like discouraged or, you know, there was moments I was like, is this working? Do I need yeah. it? And then, um, there was something that was in one of the modules. I can't remember what it was exactly, but it was like, um, think basically thinking about it in long term, like uh -huh. you know, um, which every time I was like, eh, do I maybe I'll just have a Dorito or you know, it was like no because you know it's not fueling your your overall like goal, which is yeah. to get pregnant and have a baby. Um, so yeah. I think that's awesome to remember is like what you want sometimes isn't always like, you know, that instant gratification. Um, yeah. So, you know, 
just in it for the long haul. <laughs> sure. Absolutely. Absolutely. And so, yeah, I just appreciate your spirit and your ability to, to evolve and change and take information and process that information in a productive way. And it was honestly such a pleasure to work with you. And you I too. thank you for your time today too, just to share your story. And I really hope, I know that this will inspire many women. Um, and so I just, yeah, I wish you the best of luck. And I hope this first trimester you, you come out of this with a better appetite and yeah. feel more <laughs> like yourself. <laughs> totally. <laughs> Wonderful, Ashley. Well, thank you again for your time and thank you again for your commitment. And, um, we all are appreciative of it. Thank you.